Hey guys, welcome Hello. to the Unplugged Health series 2020. 2020. We are now five months into January. By the five sounds. months into January. That's what it seems like. <laughs> the 31st of January while we're recording this and I've noticed the recurring theme is that everyone finds January to be a very long month. Well, particularly if you've done dry January or you've done... Well, you say if you've done drugs. <laughs> no, then it's probably gone very quickly. Yeah. Um, if, if it's gone, uh, it's if you've done dry January or you've done the January, it's either been a rewarding month or a very long month. And there's going to be a lot of steak sold tomorrow. I, I was listening to on the radio, someone phoned in um, earlier in the week saying they were really looking for sat forward to Saturday. And I said, why are you looking forward to Saturday? I said, I've done the January and I've done dry January. Saturday, I'm going out for a steak and I'm going to go and drink. I thought, well, it's kind of defeated yeah, the old totally. thing, but there might be a bit of that. But uh, Happy New Year, if, uh, if that's not too late in the year, never but um, never, never too late. Chinese New Year is soon, isn't it? It is something like that. I don't know I don't when, know. it may have been, but Happy New Year, guys. And on that note, actually, that is something which was one of the topics I, I was talking about before to someone, that... A lot of people have these goals and it comes to January and we say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but committing for the short term. And they think, oh great, it's going to improve my health. And then they see some short term changes, but then there's a deadline where they stop and then completely fall off the wagon because they've gone so extreme. We see it with crash diets as well. Yeah. What are your thoughts with regards to that, that people that maybe have gone veganuary or veganry, whatever you want to call it, or dry January or whatever it is, or World Carnival Month that I've seen some people do just yeah. to go against the grain. But then February the 1st comes, it's almost like the clock strikes 12, just like it did in the start of January with the dry January. It's before midnight, drinking, yeah. absolutely wasted. 1st of January, massive hangover. But on that type of dieting of methodology, the thoughts behind it, it's, a, it's the, well, we've spoken before of the yo-yo diet, the fad, fad approach. We did a uh, talk um, during this week and with working with one of the, uh, the solicitors we, we associate with and the, they, they, we did a talk there and we chose pretty much, the, the top of the talk was well-being and, and health and moving forward through the year. And we chose particularly, ideally, the date on purpose around now to kind of actually avoid that high momentum, high enthusiasm, strange, I'm gonna choose whatever is fashionable at the moment. Um, so I think now is the best time for actually to people to look at, look at their life or lifestyle and, and looking to move forward because the hype is gone. Uh, I just think they get, we get caught up with that. And I think most people feel pretty rubbish after the excess of, of Christmas, and then media and everything is just, that's the time of year, it's almost kind of predicted that that's when you, you're gonna, you're gonna do different things, and, and pe people get caught up in the, in the momentum. You, I, I, I quite like the idea of a January, because it brings in the concepts and stuff, but uh, you know, if, if you, unless your goal is, you've thought hard about it and you wanna become a vegan, most people, probably wouldn't have even gone through the whole month, or they would have, but they are looking forward to then a steak. And you're kind of like, well, Defeat you what's your region? What, what's the, the thought process behind it? And probably in most times, there isn't a thought process, and that's probably the problem. It's usually this time where people think that historically, or historically for me, as uh, doing nutrition and doing health coaching with clients around the world, it's always been, January has been a little bit slower for client acquisition. When I was personal training one to one, it was busier. But now it's where it's online and accountability. People have tried now doing it themselves, and then it's no. We actually realise there's such a power in hiring someone for accountability. That that third eye looking in, that that person looking in, that February is the time when people actually say, actually, I do want these goals, but I need some help with them. Yeah, yeah. Rather than trying to do them themselves, smashing them, and then being absolutely knackered by the third week of it and then falling off. And then we have things that the media is saying, well, Blue Monday was it last Monday, I think it was, which is meant to be the most depressing day of the year. And that I forgot, as that I forgot today was Brexit, like all that sort of thing, because I've deleted all the news things off my phone and don't watch the news or anything like that. And 
Facebook news feed is blocked on my actual computer on my laptop. And then someone actually mentioned to me, like, it's Brexit today, and I didn't realise it was a Blue Monday, I didn't realise about Brexit, and it was actually quite nice to think, oh, is Brexit actually still happening? Yeah, and then, but we I was asked today whether was I doing anything to mark Brexit this evening, or, was, big I, state tomorrow. or was I going to bed? British I said, beef. I said, well, I'm just quite happy that at least we've got somewhere with it, and uh, but I'm I'm pretty confident that when I wake up tomorrow, the world will still be all right. So like when the Millennium Club was here. <laughs> yeah. And on that note as well, we've got the coronavirus that everyone is going crazy about. As well. Yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's. Um, from a healthcare perspective, it feeds into that underlying fear that uh, that that we generally always have that the next the next virus and the next uh, uh, pandemic is around the corner, and, and when there's an element of fear. Um, and I've had one or two patients today comment on it. Um, and on the other hand, you've got some people who are kind of trying to keep it into context. You know, I think when we look at it in context, as you say, is that there's the common cold and flu and all these different things are going to have a lot more, they are more common than these sorts of things, and they're going to have a lot more damage to people's work, to workplaces, to people's long-term health, and also just to people's complete lifestyles and family than this potentially would have. So if we're scared of that, well, that would have a massive damage, but if we're scared of that, why aren't we having the same fears with these things that actually happen all the time. Yeah, well, uh, and but it's it, it the media fuels it in that and the the medical the medical establishment is always on the back foot thinking we what we we're going to get caught out sometime. There's there's going to be a virus or something that you know where we we don't have the answer and we've got to, we're trying to control something that we have we're still trying to understand. Um, so we've had it with swine flus and bird flus and, and that and, and you know, hopefully we never are really that caught out. I don't want to come across blasé. However, it still comes down to basically how would you, how would you approach a virus? How do you strengthen your immune system? Keep it in context because when you look at the stats and the numbers and, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's terrible if someone's had issues and, and there's lives lost. But that scenario is also happening with the common flu and, yeah. and regular things year in year out. And then if you look at it globally, you've got then things like malaria and stuff. So you you just got to keep keep it in keep it in context at the moment. But it's been but it is fueled with that element of um, what's coming. It's that unknown. Is is this the the, the start of something big? And we've had um, emails and things from even through from um, the. The companies which do the the gels and the sanitizers that be prepared for um, coronavirus Can and stuff that. and and that. so there's even that that has a, a marketing opportunity to tap into into that fear and so it's 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 one at the moment really kind of yeah you know, we can we can be aware of it and observe but but at the moment we keep it into keep it in context. Let's let's talk about the common cold, the flu and stuff like that because it is flu season as we say it but again a lot of that I believe is around mindset and we know that the winter time is when we don't get out as much. We've just had Christmas where people eat a lot of junk and food that they don't normally have with lower vitamin D levels because not being out and vitamin K and all that sort of stuff which potentially leading to issues when it comes to the mood and but there's a lot more depression because it's, we've had about three months of darker nights and yeah. darker mornings now people are then turning to comfort foods we have foods that want to boost our serotonin levels and get a lot of chocolate in there but all this in our system has always been said it's cold and flu season rather than saying the reasons why people are actually lowering their yeah. immune system so i explain it to people looking at it from a, um, to, don't worry necessarily about flu or cold or that debate. Look at it from an immune system perspective. You only have two factors really. You have exposure and you have um, the strength of the host. So you only have two things you can manipulate. You're not going to get cold, a cold or flu unless you're exposed to the virus. But what people don't realize is that vast majority of the time we, we're getting exposed to it all the time. 
So why don't you get ill every time? So you have an immunity, you have a, a resistance against it. A lot of times you will fall ill with colds and flus by having exposure, but you are e even temporarily weakened. Mm -hmm. So that can be instantly from a thought, food, um, so you can have a stressful couple of days, you can go out uh, on the lash for on Friday, Saturday, and then you get ill. But you have to have exposure, but you also have to have a weakened constitution at the time. Your defenses have to be low, or your defensive load, your body has to go through a health expression to, to trigger off the immune system to fight that virus. But if you take a big, a big workplace environment, you, if you have 100 people, why do, when someone gets a cough or cold or flu, why don't they all go down? Some do, some don't. So there is a difference in immunity. So it's about how can I lower the risk by you know, transmission, washing hands, hygiene, but also how can I strengthen the host? So you've got the, the strength of the host, and then you've got the virility, the strength of the virus. So we know a common, common cold is very easy to, to transmit. That doesn't mean that everyone's going to fall ill. And same will be with the coronavirus. It's, there will be a certain uh, vulnerability for some, and that's where you get into the um, you know, different, different uh, categories of, of client, patient, the elderly, the baby, the, 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 if someone who's already immune suppressed is going to be vulnerable. I think as well... Um so mindset going back is, is part of it is part of it because through mindset of how you are approaching life greatly hugely has been proven to influence um, your immune system so mindset is huge when it comes to the immune system but a lot of people tend to look at that quick thing oh, I'll just take some vitamin C um, I'll take this I'll take that because that'll help my immune system but You've got to understand that it's 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 more complex of how you run immune system by just so uh, yeah a healthy constitution healthy food exercise rest sleep is a huge one people are coming back in and then at this time of year it's still everyone's indoors it's not cold enough at the moment you know we're not having the, the heavy frosts so they're not knocking down some of those viruses and um, so there's lots and lots of factors. So a lot of people got to you know keep those flus and viruses in context. I think like you touched on a couple of points there, and going back to my own journey with health over what, 33 and a half years now. Uh, but the last year, if we use for example, I went to New York in end of April, May, and it was a break. There was some business stuff going on, but it was a break that I enjoyed it. Had a lot of gluten, had a lot of dairy, which I don't eat anyway. And we know what happened that week. I had five migraines mixed up with time difference and all these different things. My immune system went low and I came here, I think I got back on the Tuesday or Monday and I came here on the Friday with one of the worst migraines I've ever had. Yeah. And uh, that was a massive eye-opener of when we look at our bodies and our immune system. And now, because I travel for work, uh, a lot when it comes to, I was in Philadelphia in September, Vancouver in November, Philadelphia last week or the week before, but now, it's a matter of planning. I knew that Vancouver, it's been a while since I had eight hour time difference, that the next two days after I'm back is that I need to go easier in the gym, get into as much routine as possible, and make sure that my nutrition is as good as possible, possibly can be. The same with when I got back from Philadelphia. And I know that in the past that that lack of sleep, and it was great to be upgraded and be able to lay down and have sleep. The times I've done that on planes, I've got much better recovery before. But when I've had to set up right in um, economy and premium economy, and it's like, luckily I've been in a position where we've been able to get the upgrades, but it's been lovely to be able to sleep and keep your sleep routine as good as possible. Yeah, the so idea back was, in the grave. The idea so, would be to do something like that and travel and know that you give yourself a couple of days recovery. But most people go, well, I'll have, I'll, I'd rather have the, those extra couple of days still on holiday. Yeah. Hi guys, you've come to the end of this week's podcast, episode 35. Join us next week where we continue this podcast in part two, episode 36.